Welcome to an episode of Deliberately Woke. Yeah, welcome. Welcome to an episode. Yeah. So, the last time we spoke, Mm -hmm. we were talking about In the Heights. Oh, yes. Yes, the film debut of this musical. Yes. By Lin-Manuel Miranda. Yes. Um... So, I watched it last night, mm-hmm. and I have some opinions. Yes. I, a lot and of people have had opinions. <laughs> a lot of thoughts this on this. This is trending now. Yeah. So, yeah. It's pretty popular. Mm-hmm. So, overall, though, what did you think of the film? <sighs> um, I, so, I mean, I love musicals. Me too. Yeah. Musical so theater I'm background. So, like, yeah, it's fun. It's New York, this is yeah. exciting. You know, a, a, you know, a very whitewashed New York, a very <laughs> fake ass Hollywood New That's York. That's right. Even though the there was, yeah, the <laughs> best kind. You know, with sets and stuff. Even though you know there were some scenes where I saw the bubble gum on the mm-hmm. on the corner, so I knew it was really New York. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just had to be sure. And the George Washington Bridge. Oh, of in course. A lot of scenes. In every scene. Yeah, it had to be. Otherwise, it's not Washington yeah, Heights. Yeah, of course. No, no. You know? I mean, so originally I, I like wanted to watch this because I heard about a lot of people commenting on the colorism in the movie, yeah, and um, you know this not being a, a a true representation of what it is like or what people look like mm-hmm. in the Heights, yeah. Um, and you know that's not to say that people in the movie didn't look like they were from the Heights; they definitely did, but yeah. Whitewashed. Definitely whitewashed. And I just feel like this was the perfect opportunity for us to tackle colorism and anti-blackness when it comes to the media and just like society generally. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that they they dropped the ball with that. Um, And, you know, I think that's evident definitely from uh, the responses from from the response and and from Lin-Manuel's tweet, you know, Mm -hmm. like saying that they dropped the ball when it came to this. Yeah. Um, I feel like when examining this, I'm like, okay, it definitely came from, you know, he's the creator of this story. This is his musical. He mm-hmm. wrote it, I think it was like 2005, 2005 or something. 2005, yeah. And yes, it's his his experience being who he is. He's, he's a lighter Latinx man. Um so like I understand like it's it's from his perspective, but at the same time, mm-hmm. him doing who he is, being outspoken about Black Lives Matter, yeah. about you know Puerto Rican independence, this was the opportunity to yeah. fucking put some dark black people mm-hmm. <laughs> on screen and let people know that you know Latin America is not just. Yeah, white the standard. Or, or, or lighter. Yes, this this standard that they they presented mm-hmm. in the movie. Um, but those are just some initial thoughts. Like, what did you what do you think? I mean, I it's hard because I like seeing a story mm. that could be similar to my story or my family story. People mm. that look like me, right? Um. But I do think like that there's this complacency once you get into Hollywood, right? And that you miss the ball on so many things. And I, I, I'm, I'm disappointed not only that they missed it because I didn't in- expect them mm-hmm. to like have like any. You know? Well, I saw the trailer, so I was like, okay, this is. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't expect anything, but I, I would have expected the and their responses to mm-hmm. be better. And I'm not criticizing the actors because they're just getting paid and doing they're not they don't have any role in like the decision making mm-hmm. at least from my understanding. But like the director and then um a uh, Lemon Woman Randa saying like that you know they missed the ball and the director saying that he had to be educated to me doing a film like this because of its impact um you know being a musical that's focused on like Latin ex folks exclusively like we have west side story but that story is kind of perverse in the sense of like puerto rican and and italian and all these things and like it's from a long time ago in the 60s um i think like that i think the missing the ball was intentional now i don't know if it was intentional by the creators or or it's because it became hollywood and need to be whitewashed because i also think they wanted to make money and they wanted this to be digestible in white american Mm -hmm. 
community like white american viewership and homes and stuff and it's like oh okay these people are a little darker but they still look kind of white that's what i felt when i watched it i think the main character who's puerto rican not dominican but he plays a dominican actor, yeah. to me is very very fair skin mm -hmm. puerto rican like he has some indigenous features you know but very fair skin has blue eyes i mean like very fair skin and then his love interest is mexican <laughs> Which mm -hmm. is like, there's nothing wrong with Mexicans, but I do think that we could have tried to get a Puerto Rican or Dominican or someone, you know, that looked more like the people from the Heights would look like. The same thing as we were talking about. Like, they could have just, like, had this, the, the neighborhood just film the neighborhood yeah. being themselves and showing the color. So I think that part is is unfortunate for me and i don't know if it was them intentional or it was the production that yeah. did that so that's where i feel like my criticism i want to criticize them more but i don't think it was in their control at least yeah. what i'm I, I feel i think it's twofold too because like yeah here you know this is an example of representation right we don't have lots of movies like this yeah at all exactly but at the same time it's like lukewarm you know what I mean? They yeah. could they could have pushed or we would have wanted them to push harder. And I think it's also twofold in like, you know, again, like Lynn Manuel's experience as, as himself and like, you know, us all being socialized into this like anti blackness. But I think for the purpose of like creating this film and I'm not I'm not putting that on him. It's just something that we all live with. But I think it's probably more so like Hollywood and, and, and people in production and yeah. and who they hire for casting that have made these decisions, you know, time and time again, not just with this movie, but it's kind of like the standard not to go with, we're not going yeah. with darker people even when it's a movie, you know, with, with you know, an all black cast or a mainly black cast, yeah. unless it's intentional, like we're picking people that are mm -hmm. darker specifically, like, yeah. And but it's all it is up to their discretion. So they could have made this. Yeah. But they it, should it, have. It, yeah, they should have. They but should it, have. It, it speaks to the anti blackness in yeah. Hollywood. But also in Latin in, in Latin American community. Yes, yes, that's and that's, twofold. that's the part that I think people are not at least again, I, uh, the American um responses I've seen. I haven't seen the Latin American response to it. But also this anti-blackness exists in Latin America. They have narratives on what is acceptable on TV. And Latin America does not like Afro-Latin people. Right. And they don't want to show them on TV. And again, that is part of this market. Whenever they were doing the projections of how much this movie was going to make, a majority of Latin people don't want to see a black a Latin person. Mm -hmm. you know, And that's just the reality. Because anti-blackness is very real especially in Dominican, Puerto Rican, Caribbean, Spanish-speaking countries, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. you know. But overall, it exists there, and it, it's a problem there. So I, I, I don't know. I would love to see, like, Latin America's response to this, like non-English-speaking mm -hmm. uh, media's response to, to what this is, because I do think it's important that this story is told, but I do wish that they would have not whitewashed it more. The same thing as like some of the some of the narratives. I thought the story lines were very weak. You I know, agree. Um, I thought like everything was sugar coated to like be digestible for white people. But like the whole experience of the character in Stanford, the discrimination of her being the help and then her, them searching her because of mm -hmm. um that something was stolen yeah, they, or something. they thought that she stole their a pearl necklace you know i think roommate. going in depth to those situations or the other character having problems with real estate yeah. right that's an issue in new york with depending on your name whether it's first name last name how you look when they meet you you know some buildings want you to have six months of fucking rent in yeah. your in your account like all these things i feel like they could have gone into depth more and I, agree. I think they definitely brushed over they it. brushed over so many things. And then also like that the protagonist, his 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 goal is to fucking own a bodega. Well, that's the part at the end. I it's was, like, what the I mean, fuck? This is this, the story. Like he didn't have to like, you know, home is <laughs> where you are. Kind of like, you know, uh, that kind it's of story. Like very but, ridiculous. but also there's no way I'm passing up a damn beach. In, to live on in DR for a bodega. But, what yeah. a bod but, you know, I think, you know, we were speaking about this and I'll let you talk about it. Like, but like, you know, kind of like where 
Latinx people like fit in or what what yeah. their goal should be in this country or where we're mm -hmm. like what's best for them yeah. like or fitting in and mm -hmm. to this like American ideal or... yeah I mean I think that narrative about picking to stay here than to go to DR is that you know that um that propaganda about America being the best mm -hmm. and Latinx folks are really great at that you yeah. know we have this psyche about being the group the good, um, you know, the good immigrant here and working hard and, you know, staying here. And we love our home countries, but we love America more mm -hmm. because it's so great here and back home is so fucked up and all these things, you know. So I think that narrative was playing. Also, the grandma talking about patience and faith. Yeah. To me, that's also that narrative that's perpetuated about like us being the good immigrant as long as we have you know, patience and faith, things will come our way. Let's not be adversarial. Let's, let's not join. Not let's not join needle. protests. Let's not talk about race. It's not our place. You know, yeah. even Black Lives Matter in Latinx families, it's like, but we're not black, so we shouldn't talk about mm -hmm. it. But the difference is we're American, and that's the difference. We're American, and this is a problem in our country, and we should talk about it. So I think it was playing into that, and that was, to me, unfortunate because of who – Miranda is his yeah. brand as this left person creating yeah. this Hamilton thing that's all about race and stuff. That's where I feel like you missed the mark, yeah. you know, and I don't you know, and that's where it's just unfortunate. It's great that this story is told. I just wish I just wish it was to told in a better in a better way yeah. and more real. And I wonder, like, again, like how much power he actually had. Like, I, I mean, how many how much of your rights do you sign away when you when you create? Yeah. You know, uh, a story that's then adapted into film and uh, like who owns the rights to changing mm -hmm. certain things like w what his role was in casting. I mean, he but was I think he was in it. So I'm assuming his role was really heavy. And I'm I'm assuming true. that it's his production that he created in college. So I'm mm. assuming he didn't sell. He might sell, have sold a license. I'm assuming he didn't sell the whole rights to it. But at the end of the day, as we were talking about as we were talking about it these people of color get to a certain level of privilege and access and then the complacency comes into place mm. and that's what happened here like a complacency of like whitewashing because it has to be digestible for white people yeah. and that's what when i watched this film that's what i thought about i thought this is what is digestible for white people in middle america to understand what it's like to be a latinx person in new york yeah you know, I mean, that's well, what I thought when learning a little bit about like how it was adapted into a screenplay and like, you know, the different production companies that came on mm -hmm. and then them dropping them like it was, um, I think, um, Universal Studios like first wanted to adapt it into a, a into a screenplay and then they decided to drop them because yeah. they wanted a bankable Mm -hmm. Latina to yeah, be the of lead course. in 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 the story, mm -hmm. and um, that's why I still wonder like about his discretion, what discretion he really had over this. Yeah. And I'm not saying because he said he dropped the ball, but then that also makes me wonder like, are there people like you better take this fucking blame for this? Yeah, like, but also like, know? who do you put behind you? Because I think this could have been an easy sell. He's from New York. It's about the heights. Like to mm. me, you go there and you fucking film. You just go there and you film yeah. and you give an actor like that's another thing. An opportunity. To you give an actor an opportunity from the neighborhood. Like that's why I just don't understand. Yeah. But I also and think also, this this American mm. concept to what a Latino is on TV or on in, in, in media, you know, like I think that's really important. They like us to, you know, to look Latin, but that we're passable to be Italian or something like mm -hmm. this. I think that's really important. You know, and I think a good example of that is J-Lo. Oh, That's yeah. why I don't like her so much is because <laughs> she's always playing a fucking Italian yeah. and she's fucking Puerto Rican from the Bronx. With the, I mean, if you're from New York and you hear that woman speak, you know where the hell she's, she's from, from yeah. and what she is. But that's why, you know why, the, but if you're like giving her responsibility in the roles that she chooses, then the, the actors in this movie should have a responsibility I'm giving her, too. I'm giving her a responsibility because when she did some of those films, she was already famous. And she is, yeah, she's she been quiet the whole time about, this. about race. She wouldn't have gotten and about, into this 
you know, she talked, and even about Puerto Rico and its place, mm -hmm. and that bothers me. Mm -hmm. And then, like, now, because it's cool to be Afro Latin in like young spaces, and now she's trying she's to stay young, it. and now she's, I tu negrito del Bronx, like, that bothers me, you know? Mm -hmm. And I feel like I could be like, she's my cousin because I'm fucking Puerto Rican. Yeah. So I can, I can, I can, <laughs> I can, can be like, her I can criticize wants. her. But I think there is like a responsibility that artists have to the work that they, to the projects that they join, too. Yeah, of course. Because I the, agree. The but I do think some of them have more power like to me none of the actors Absolutely, in this film you, are are famous no, like i mean that. i mean a few of them are like the the main i mean i i i know the main the main character and anthony Rom ramos he but like broadway in, right not no, like broadway he's been and she's got to have it and a few other a few other things that i've seen him in but again that's probably that you know i yeah. don't speak for everybody but I do think like their responses definitely sucked to of the questions that they had about because colorism they don't care. because they just they glossed over it. They Same with the director, like saying they just chose the best people for the job, like which feeds into the narrative that there aren't qualified mm -hmm. dark people, yeah. black people to, to 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 fill these roles, which we know aren't true. And like you no. said, if they had gone to the heights, exactly. if they had gone to the area and just like recruited people from there. They would have found people with darker skin to thing. fill the lead roles, and also, you know, back to the responsibility that Lin, Lin Manuel has. Like, um, there's a character who's who's Jamaican, <laughs> who's the only. <laughs> and Is his name Benny? I um, let me see. Let me see the cast of the Heights. Um. Yeah, his name is Benny. Corey Hawkins is the actor mm -hmm. who portrays a character who's a taxi cab dispatcher who's yep. in love with, um, with Nina. Nina. And I just, it's just interesting that he was the darkest person. And I say this like, <laughs> we speak about like what being super dark is and all that like the dis the disconnect with like yeah. different ethnic groups and how we label each other but anyway i just find it interesting that he couldn't be included in the latin community like he had to be like the black character they made was jamaican and it's like great to include other caribbean countries in this story but, like not even really but though. yeah that's what i'm saying it's there was like no a, real a, a little, i'm jamaica and jamaican yeah, and like now we're flag. gonna have a history of jamaica yeah, or yeah. about me like it was literally like a glimpse of his flag and if you don't know the jamaican flag you wouldn't have known well, that he most pulled white some people shit don't out know at all or all or, the flags when you were talking about how yeah. they had the flags and they showed like Brazil and other yeah, countries. It's, Most it's, white people don't even know what the fuck that is. But I'm just like, so you included this character, but he can't really be part of it. He's still other. And then also the way that they talk about him and his body and him having certain larger yeah, body he's parts, in, in like well endowed, pissed me off that well, this is right. the topic of conversation because he's the only like. <clears throat> self-identifying black man or at least i don't know i i mean i don't know who he identified as but like um presenting black man yeah. um and so that's another thing that annoyed me <laughs> with this with this movie i also thought it was interesting like the way that um like different um the different generations like mm -hmm. handle racism yeah like Nina's father, who's betrayed by Jimmy Smith, is told, like, she tells her father, like, hey, you know, I don't want to go back to Stanford because they're basically, they're racially profiling me. Like, I've had this issue with my with my roommate, and they thought I with was the stealing. Trustees. And yeah. With the trustees. And, and then people in the lunch hall think that I'm, you know, a work-study student. And the response is, there's nothing wrong with being a waiter. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with going to school either. And a total, like, just gloss, not even a gloss over, they don't even touch on the fact that this is racist other yeah. than you inferring it mm -hmm. and, like, focusing on that part of the story, which was her whole storyline was, like, mm -hmm. shit's fucked up and racist and I don't want to go to this white school. But in the end, there's not even a solution to that. She goes back to school. Like, the dude, like, he sells because half of this. you're an immigrant. You have you're to. You're complacent. You you're have a to. good... And you Latin have to go through American it. American immigrant. 
I you also know? feel the like... whole thing of her too, like the way they praise her. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, she's going, the star. She's you're the, the star. star. You're going away to school and all that. It's the it's that that exists in Latin American mm. culture, especially with people like in those neighborhoods where not a lot of us get to go away to yeah. school. You know, it's the same thing in my family. Like, you know, not a lot of us went away to school. Yeah. Too. But you're always that, and it's always like, oh no, you got to stick it out because you're representing. But instead of like being adversarial and be like no this shit's fucked up and not gonna be okay but that's the thing i didn't like about this film and it's very subtle messaging but about being a good latin american immigrant mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. and her going back to honor her family no matter the racism that she's there yeah but they also don't talk yeah. about like the fucked up student loan situation here like what the fuck well like, exactly like, that was that you know he had to sell his he half sell of his, his whole business, fucking business so for her to go to, to school fucking school for a year <laughs> not even the full tuition like, this is insane. like half the year that she missed he has to sell insane. his whole business and now be destitute I was yelling for, at that part yeah. I was like wait she, yeah, this he lost his livelihood so she go to school in America my problem this is, is fucked up it didn't really address any problems like they they like were like yeah because they were playing like i said they were playing it. the complacent Wrong. latin american immigrant that yeah. is what this whole thing is that's and what the whole like, thing is the same thing as like when the the, the salon owner who's mm -hmm. panamanian i thought she was dominican i didn't know who she was mm -hmm. but she's a broadway star i didn't know yeah i've seen she's her i've never seen her before mm -hmm. but she's panamanian but when she's talking about like the resiliency of our people which it's nice to talk about like i thought it was very it's very progressive that they talked about Taino genocide. You don't hear that. That was mm -hmm. progressive. But the fact that she's like, oh, you know, we've done this. We've done that. Like, we're so resilient. And, you know, no matter what comes in our way, we're going to thrive and achieve. Like, that narrative yeah. is a problem. It is a, it it's is a, a problem, problem because it doesn't address the system that oppresses. It shouldn't exactly. be allowed to just exactly. go on like this. And, and they don't talk okay about the gentrification. They talk about it like we're all moving to the Bronx, but not the policies yeah. and not being a part of the solution, like they saying this totally is fucked up. Exactly. Head, and insane. that part I didn't like. And I thought, was it because it's a children's film? Which I don't know. Is, is it? it? A I don't know. Film? I was going to ask I, you the I same question. I'm, I was confused about that too because I was like, oh, maybe that's why they didn't touch on serious topics, but then they're talking about. You know, Dick sizes. yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, <laughs> BBCs. You know, what I mean, like, come on, why, why do we have to go there? It's okay to exploit that, of but course. like, not talk because about that's a positive the serious stereotype. shit. And it's like, well, we won ninety six thousand dollars, so I'm gonna <laughs> pay these legal fees so that I can stay in this country and not talk about how wait, but stay, up. maybe stay in yeah, the country maybe. because it's the lawyer be was road. It's gonna be a hard road yeah. for you. Yeah. Fucking like, well, let me take my money back. Ass. Money back and go somewhere else. Like, can you help me or not? Or like, it is fucked up, and it just being okay with it being fucked up. That's the thing. Like at this point, we don't need Those that stories. to be. Yeah, we don't need that to be no. the end message. It's just you know, settle for. Damn, the girl. I thought she wanted also <laughs> the other character. What's her name? Wanted to be a, a fashion designer. Uh, she had to have a kid in the end with That's dude right. and and live that, in the bodega and have a suenito, yeah. That's, That's the dream. Have a child yeah. and own a bodega. Yeah. That's it. I mean, listen, listen, I would love to own a bodega. <laughs> <laughs> However, I would not. as far as like the dream and that being the Is that your and, dream? No. I don't want to own a bodega in the heights. Is, is not that your dream? living in a concrete city. I would take the beach. I'd be on the beach away, I mean, not doing this, dealing with. But maybe that's the, true too. The like, ending, how she, you don't know what the fuck happened to her fashion dream. Uh, it was, and it she's, was no, she's no consequence. She's a mother <laughs> yeah, now. That's it. And he owns a bodega. Yeah, and everybody's and that's good. It. And, and everyone's I stayed good, in the neighborhood. And we and, stayed yeah. here, and we had a whole shitload of kids, and yeah. like you know, that's it. That's it. That's the, it. That's it. But the, you know what? I, I think back to when, when he made this musical, 2005. This is a digestible story then, I think. And I, I would love to talk to him and be like, did you do this? Because he knew that white people would be like, yes, we love a story about oh, struggle. Yes. And <laughs> we want we this. We love it. Yeah, let's keep With it like a little this. bit of Spanish? Yeah. <laughs> we'll touch a little bit about Ola. the social issues. I like this. Yeah, now. I like this. Yeah. yeah, yeah, a little bit. Only, only the just, surface. Can J-Lo be every yeah. role? Yeah. <laughs> can she do everything? But I also find that interesting that they didn't have any... 
high profile. I mean, Mark Anthony Mark. was in it. Oh my God, his role Ugh, was terrible. Disgusting. I didn't even know what he said at the end. Like well, he's his, an idiot. I replayed it. <laughs> I was like, okay. Yeah, he's like, I don't know. He, he uh, he's yeah. he's getting weird in his yeah. older age. He's getting weirder. He's getting and weirder. I like, you know, he can sing to me anytime. Yeah, I love of Mark course, Anthony's he can sing voice. anytime, but he, his personality not so yeah. much. <laughs> I mean, Man on Fire is like, well, you know. El Cantante, that's the movie, Oof, though. That's that movie good, is that's also good. on HBO. That's good, yes. <laughs> For tonight. <laughs> For tonight. I love that one of my favorite yes. movies. Um, but, uh, I, yeah, I just think it was really whitewashed. It was really from, it was really catering to, like, middle America mm. white people to, like, digestible, like, what in the Heights is and, like, what it is like to be Dominican or Puerto Rican in Washington Heights. But it was very whitewashed. Yeah. And I also... The other thing that I noticed is the um, the product placement mm. I thought was too much mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. and a little ridiculous. But I, I equated that to how the U.S. perceives Latinx folks as like we're just a new market to conquer. Oh, yeah. But it's there's no genuine connection to equity or inclusion or making us a part of the U.S. It's more of that we're another market to make the money. And Absolutely. that's why you see every like there's like over 30 products mentioned in this film mm-hmm. or like showcase. And I think even the lottery, which Latin people love every fucking yeah, Saturday. They love the lottery. <laughs> like, <laughs> woof, they're like every weekend they pray to yeah. it. And like every week it's their week. So I think like that part, I am criticizing him a little bit, the, mm-hmm. the Manuel, um, yeah. because I do think um, it's a little selling out our people. But I also know maybe that's just the way of the game. Like I said, we see yeah. it in every industry. A person of color gets to power and then they and the complacency. Yeah. We see it even Obama as president. We yeah. see it. And that's the thing. And I don't know if it's like if there's like a fucking tribunal that they're like, listen, you're at this level yeah, now. No, I, I s- stop the black shit. Stop the shit. Stop the brown. You're shit. here. You are not. Fast. And like m- like uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda, like you have the millions now. You're Be stop, able, just shut up. Stop the shit. You can do your Black Lives Matter and your independence over here. But now we're making a film. Yeah, because and we need to make money off of it so shut the hell up and we're gonna pick these people because i i i i i I just don't understand how they weren't able to even put like amara negra in there somehow even though her accent is super miami crazy for new york but to me it would be better than having the main the main love interest being mexican to me that's a slap in the face to korean people did you think like uh yeah to me, that's a slap in the mm. face of Caribbean people. She's not Caribbean. And not to say that Mexican is not like that I'm putting ourselves against each other. Yeah, or but the whole thing is there's not a Mexican film. If it was about like a Mexican film from Texas, that would, would put a, a fucking Dominican. Puerto Rican or Dominican as a main character to talk about Mexican things. Yeah. So. Yeah, I agree. I think that we're, we've reached an age where it's like, you know, let's actually cast people who fit the role for real like yeah. and and who have these ideas. we're not living in the age of like white people portraying fucking egyptians and everybody else like oh, we we can totally move on for that and people and even if some people aren't ready others are ready and it's time to push the needle and yeah and be active about this but i think that's a good question you mentioned about if like and i think they're not asking these people the right questions mm. i think one question i would like to ask miranda and the director is like what was the casting situation situation like, like? but that see that's what i i i feel like whatever production company was like these are our people because that's how it works you know i have a friend who works in casting at a very famous production company and they i'm like they're the ones making the decisions that they already know who they wanted before probably from the whoever's paying paying them like and i also think that it's just a standard practice not to pick people who look a certain way like i i I, like even if they weren't given guidelines of oh no don't don't pick dark people which they very well may have because casting calls are are very very specific for sure they did you better not be, you can't be above this weight. You can't be this For short. Sure you did. can't be this skin tone. Like, I mean, if yeah. you are 
to the spectrum this way. No, we want this, and yeah. they will. That will override the t- the talent that they choose, and of that's course. what pisses me off about the answers that they give when it comes to responding to the criticism from the well, people. And that's for sure with what the Spanish, the Latin American image is mm. in this country. That that's for yeah. sure. It's for sure because you never see, and they talk about it all the time. The um the actress uh what is her name? She's Cuban, Afro Cuban. She talked about that, like in America, like she was she's Cuban, Mm -hmm. but she's black Cuban and American. And she would go to casting and they would be like, oh, you're too black to be Latin. um, And you're too but you're too you're you're not black enough to play a black role. So like what we're going to put you. And she was the one that coined that term in the U.S. They like their Latinas to look Italian. Is it Gina Torres? Someone, 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 a Cuban. Afro Cuban. Um I think the one that's married to well, I don't want to say if I'm wrong. Yeah. But, um, Lawrence Fishburne. That they one. I think yeah, they're her. Yeah. Her. I think they're divorced now. But anyway. Oh, her. According to Wiki. Her. Yes, She's Gina the one. Torres. And she mentioned that. And it's true. Yeah, it is. It an is true. And they have a specific look image of what it means. To be Latin. Yeah. It's the same thing as why Sofia Vergara became famous. Yeah. She is an acceptable image of what a colombian should be but mm-hmm. she is not the majority she is one colombian look well, that obviously exists but that's not the majority yeah. of colombia yeah it's the same thing as like you um brazil it's the same thing giselle the, the supermodel oh, yeah that is what the they think standard of what brazilian is that's when what, i don't even think about her when i think about but that's what i th- i mean i don't know that's what i think americans portray as mm-hmm. brazilian but most brazilians are black yeah like that's just what it is, but it's this this notion of what is uh, like acceptable, like a look from there, you know, just like J Lo. J Lo is very Puerto Rican looking, mm-hmm. but she's not the only look. There are black Puerto Ricans. There are Puerto Ricans who are black. Yeah. There are Puerto Ricans I mean, who are white looking, but it's all the spectrum. Yeah. She is not the like, oh, she's our holy grail of what it is to be Latin, and also she's not what it's like to be Latin. She's one look of Latin it's America. One very specific. Look. There's over thirty three countries in Latin America. Like, the, the, you know, it's it's uh, ridiculous to think that there is one look. Mm-hmm. Selma Hayek is a different look. She's half Arab. I mean, like, I mean, yeah. you know, like it's a whole. You know, Penelope Cruz is fucking Spanish from Spain. And people, and, but they have, think she's fucking yeah. Mexican. And she's fucking from Spain. She's fucking European. So, like, it's all these things with, 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 with um, what it means to be Latin is very complex in this country because a lot of Americans think of a Latin person as a Mexican mm-hmm. or, you know, something of that nature. But there is all over the spectrum. And I just think, I, I just think they should have picked... A full Caribbean cast because of the racial caste system that exists in Latin America. Caribbean people are seen as very low Mm -hmm. in Latin America because we have a lot of black blood in us. And our accents are very different because we, you know, we just speak differently. I say we have more flavor (laughs) than other countries. But um, they, um, you know, there there is this this racial caste system that exists. And that's why if you look at, like, the main characters and stuff, even this woman... I didn't Carla. I don't know what character that is, but she's in this film yeah. and she's from Argentina. Yeah, which is a, cons- a very high up on the yeah. on the spect- on the racial spectra for Latin yeah. America. You know, Argentina yeah. Argentina's up there. Mm-hmm. So, like, this is what I'm saying about there's so many factors here because it's the Latin American. So like media, I'm assuming they were a part of this, like the Latin American, uh, you know, U.S., like the Latin, the Latino American media, Spanish speaking. I'm assuming we're a part of this in some capacity. And they're very whitewash. Yeah. They're very strict on what they're going to show on TV, who, what is Latin, what it looks like. And I think it also the American, what's digestible for the American, you know, the American public or whatever, yeah. you know, like the middle America folks, because that's what I thought this film was made for. This film was made for middle America that wants to, you know, dip their feet and be like, oh, yeah, we're not racist. We're going to watch this, you know, this Latinx movie. But there's nothing like uh, in-depth anything. Everything is just like 
very surface and like surface. Di- dip. dip your feet in it yeah. and oh. it's like oh okay it's kind of cute they're singing you know they're poor yeah they're nice you know like and that's what like i know they're it's like- hard because you want to <laughs> like it because it's a story about people that look like you yeah and it's supposed to be fun and all these things but i think that we're past the point where you can just look at things like Exactly. At surface value. And like, why whitewash it? it? Yeah. Like it's we're tired agreed, of this. Agreed. Agreed. Why we're do so that? We're so tired of this. And the point is that there was the opportunity for them to make a real difference in something and, and stand up for something and say something. Yeah. And it you know, these are like you know, expose the hidden faces which like you were saying in a lot of places are the majority of people, not mm-hmm. the minority. But I also think not for him. Miranda, not only to challenge American social society, but Latin American society. Yeah. About the anti blackness mm-hmm. that's very real. And about how him being Puerto Rican knows in Latin America that's the other the nuance to this is that Latin America has its own hierarchy. Yeah. And where Puerto Rican and Dominican sit in that hierarchy is very low. So I felt like he could have, you know, pushed the needle a little bit and had darker people and be like, these are also Right. Our family members, because most Latin Americans have a relative that's dark skin or a, you know, a black grandmother or a great grandmother or something. Yeah, this who's exists. also Latin. Like, that's a, exactly. a time to to highlight, like, the multiple identities and, like, what being Latin can be about. Like, holding, you know, having a race, having your mm-hmm. ethnicity, having a nationality and holding these multiple identities and that being a... Uh, you know, something that has been turned into something that's beautiful as opposed to just yeah. pretending it doesn't exist. Like I said, the character who became, uh, Benny, the character, Benny, the, the actor, I mean, I look at him, he looks like when I lived in, <laughs> when I lived in Hamilton, he looks like the dudes at the barbershop. Like, <laughs> he could be Dominican. You know what I oh, mean? Oh, yeah, like, yeah, of course. There's, like, I mean, that's come? an interesting question, too. How come? Like, I mean, I, I think we have to, to watch other? the play to see what how many adaptations they've had. Because I saw the play, but I don't remember yeah. the characters because it was a long time I ago. I mean, he, uh, Lin-Manuel portrayed Usnavi in the original production of this. He was that. He played yeah, that Yeah, he played the main character. So I, f- I, I find it, that's also interesting. That he plays the Dominican. Yeah. I mean, it's his musical. He do what he wants, right? Like that's the thing. I but also, know. I don't know if I again, agree with that. <laughs> again, it's like, what are you trying to say? And that's why it, this is all twofold. It's like, yes, yay, this movie was made, but also, boo, you dropped the ball. And like hard. Like yes, there's representation, but you're not acknowledging like the anti-blackness that you've been socialized into. And this was the time for you to do this, especially since you claim to be woke. But you're also, I feel like you have, I I guess I feel, and maybe I should say I and not that, you know, make it a statement that everyone, but I I feel that as a Latinx person and a part of the community that we have an obligation to to both of them, right? Mm. To challenge, because we're American, to challenge that, but to challenge our, like, Latin American culture. Mm. And that's the part that pissed me off about him in this not so much american because i get it but this film is gonna because it was produced here and made here it's gonna be amplified and translated into every fucking language yeah. and all over latin america people are gonna go crazy for this especially in dr and Porter. like it is gonna be crazy mm-hmm. that you didn't push the needle because anti-blackness is so vile yeah and so violent and alive and thriving. and so alive and thriving in Latin America that you wouldn't use this like the arts right, to, to push this. this and talk about it in a different way. And maybe he didn't have the license. Maybe he sold it and yeah. listen, he wants to make his coins go for it, but then don't sit here. And to me now, I don't want to hear you protest black lives matter. Oh, well, I don't want to, I don't want to hear you protest about changing this and policing because you're full of shit. Because to me, you have access now and you should be you to me when you hit a certain level, is when you push forward and keep pushing the needle. 
I mean, and maybe I've never been in that position. So maybe I'm just speaking out of my ass. I don't know. But to me, that's what you do. And that's why I, I don't have respect for people like him. I don't have respect for people like Jennifer. I don't have respect for people like this. Because to me, if you I can use your power for good. For me, if I was in those powers in, in that level and I had that power, I would be pushing the needle every fucking chance yeah. I get because I don't need the money. But also you've taken, I mean, there is like, I would we, be pushing we don't the needle. know what people, people claim like we talk about to be woke all the time and like be for a certain cause, but they don't really do the work to make that active and still like accept, passively accept certain things and certain ways that we, we behave with each other that feed into this racist system. Yeah. But I think it wasn't, it wasn't, I feel like his mark wasn't missed so much with the American media because I get it. This to me was a film for white people. This wasn't a film for well, our people. I mean, what film is. But I do think like the Latin American side because the rate, the anti blackness is so alive. They could have just, you know what? They didn't even have to change it. I think I agree with you. I don't think that they, even if they didn't change like the script or anything that was said or done, like just seeing the faces would make exactly. people. Exactly. That's, that's part, that's a huge huge part of it exactly and that's the part that just pisses me off because it's something that's so alive and well and the hierarchy that exists in latin america is atrocious yeah. amongst amongst latin americans yeah spanish speaking and i just think that that was a missed opportunity and that's what i felt yeah. I felt sad about, but I also like I also feel bad because I also like that this story exists yeah. for people who are Latin and, and have kids and like little kids watching this and be like, oh, my God, I could be a singer. I could be on. I, I, I do see that. Yeah, I and I don't want to be like a complete pessimist that this isn't a positive. There is positive here. But this 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 discussion of complacency, which we should talk more in depth, definitely at some yeah, point. I agree. But this a complacency a person of color gets to power and you kind of fall into line with this racial like society that we created where like, okay, you, we've given you like, it's kind of like we've given you this access to be here now shut up and, and just, do what we yeah. want. And that's it. You made it. And that's the part, that's the next level of getting rid of the racism mm -hmm. is like at that level, fuck complacency and to being like, no, we're going to do this the real yeah. way. And to me, it would, I mean, I'm, I don't know anything about production, but to me it would have been like, no, we're going to fucking film the Heights for fucking a month. Well, I mean, if a production company buys it or whatever, like that, I don't know. I don't know. I can't imagine that he didn't have any say though, because of the, you know, his, and how his, famous he yeah, was. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. His ascent. But then of again, you're right. With, he he but, sold this a long time ago, so what, you don't know. Yeah, we I, don't know. I don't know how we all know. that works. Yeah, yeah. And still, yeah, they might know. have even said, "Oh no, no, no!" But she's good. Like, let's pick. Even though, I'm I mean, sorry, the, the female leads, their she voices sucked. were all trash to me. But that's another. <laughs> that's another well, story. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that was another. They're story. just pretty. <laughs> <laughs> but like damn pick somebody they're that pretty. can sing it's a musical yeah, like they're just pretty and like you know also i love how they're always in booty shorts that's another stereotype about latinx women always well, just the hypersexual yeah they're always shit. ready I mean, for like you know something and whatever. it's like it's like come on but whatever but yeah they're all voices they're all the voices tr are trash and i to be honest some of the songs i didn't like either but uh, well, many, i mean this many is people original like, i know many people I, like the songs same. but i was like this is a bad musical <laughs> <laughs> well and the story also like who's following the storylines like it had a, none there were so the many things that just were like oh, okay we're gonna just continue with this crap the storylines like, and it's okay. more like complacency. I, like. I'm not exactly sure what happened with the taxi dispatch at the end. He, um, he sold it. He <laughs> I thought he sold half of it. He, he, so, saying, he sold half of it the first time <laughs> for the first year. Oh, and then no. he sold, remember the, when the Benny comes in and then he sees him talking to the white guy again and he's like, oh. what's going on? He sold the other half. So oh. he didn't own it anymore. So he literally sold his whole livelihood so his daughter could go to college. Meanwhile, I'm like in my head, like, why didn't you just go to Hunter or like <laughs> just City somewhere College? Less expensive. City College, which is like and two train stops away. Because it's this idea. I mean, like, you know how it is, <laughs> of know. course.
Parents well, fucking you Columbia. Go it's fucking <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to pay the same amount of money, <laughs> damn, at least eliminate like the housing God fee. Damn. <laughs> yeah, you could have been taking the fucking one yeah. train, like Took four stops. <laughs> also, I love how she hopped on the one to go to LaGuardia. I was like, girl, what are you doing? Are you taking this 125th to take the M16? You can pay for an Uber? Like, what is this? I mean, I would take the train. Too. <laughs> I would take the train I too, because I'm fucking cheap. Yeah, but <laughs> it was like discombobulated how it's, they did all of this. It was like, wild, but, but it's for white people. It's not of for of course, anyone and from nobody New from New York no, at all. But no. you know, that's just us being New York snobs. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Also, I love how everybody was super happy after <laughs> the blackout, and they're like, "We're all just." Happy to be hot together. But again, it's, a, it's that compl- it's that complacency <laughs> yeah. and that resilience. Yeah, just, that resilience model. We're just model, gonna dance. Right? That's what we do. That's we, it. We, we work just it dance and way. eat and fuck. That's, that's what. That's what we do. Movie, that's what lie. we do, though. That's it. That's all we do in the white world. We fucking we dance. Woo! We're always happy. We're resilient. We're religious, and we fuck. That's what we yeah. do in the white world. Yeah. That's all we do, and that's the part that I find. Yeah, that he fed into, and I. That's why I'm like, d- that's why I would love to talk to him to say, did you make this just so you I know, I would love to interview him because I'd did be like, Did you make this just to be like, I yeah. don't want to bash you, yeah. but I have some really <laughs> intense questions. <laughs> Sit here. Let's Sit here. Let's talk. Casting, yeah. how much did you have an influence? When you wrote this, and when, what was your intent? And when they <laughs> picked the cast, how concerned were you about the backlash? Did you care or were you like, hi, yeah. what was going on? He was like, I'll yeah. deal with it when He's it comes like after I cast the check. Check. <laughs> check. All the zeros. Yeah. I was blinded. <laughs> I couldn't see. I don't see color I don't anymore see color now. After because so many zeros, you don't see. All you see is green. Yeah, 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 I know. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's uh, yeah. So, overall, you know, musical it's kind of corny even though i love musicals mm. but they dropped the ball they, and they, they they know that they did um yeah. but staying in the you know spirit of optimism i do think that there's ugh, it's so hard to be fucking optimistic <laughs> i say let's be optimistic and let let us create a yeah. musical yeah. let's us create a musical <laughs> that's real and real like grassroots <laughs> and like <laughs> just all the realness yeah. about being from New York and yeah. Latinx and Caribbean oh, and I all these things. I didn't see not one rat on the street. No. I didn't see any trash. That's I didn't it. see any. And let's film in a real New York yeah. apartment. I didn't see people into and real like, fights and yeah, shit. Yeah, like, like fighting and like, you know, ratchet ass cousins yeah. and Where fucking deadbeat uncles. It was real nice. I was yeah, like, I would love nice. for people to be dancing. But I also thought, apartment with this. I also thought, was, did, did the real <laughs> estate developers uh, like invest in this film to get people, white people, to move to the yeah, Heights. Yeah, probably. They were like, like yeah. "Oh my God, they all just dance and <laughs> they love to dance and stuff." Yeah, let's let's go. Um, but I thought about that too. Yeah, you know, I'm not totally mad at this. Annoyed, no, I'm not but, totally you know. mad, but I am. I am disappointed. I am. Yeah, I'm very well, disappointed. Course. Because we want more. We deserve more. Everybody you know, de- everybody deserves more. I, I, I am disappointed about always whitewashing and being complacent for white folks. But I do acknowledge, like, for young kids and, like, you know, people who – preteens and stuff, this is important to yeah, see. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I think it's important. I think we shouldn't, like, completely bash it and, and see the progress. But I think we should always be cr- – we should always Absolutely. critique it and job. also push people to go further because, again, white people are not going to let us get at the table – we're going to have to push ourselves there. So that's what this yeah. is about. It's about saying you did this. You're claiming that you're a leader in this space. You're a leader for us Latinx folks. And you failed. And yeah. you fell short. And that's something that should be acknowledged. Yeah. And also fuck that table because I we'll create our own. Exactly. Table. And I would fuck create my own table and play dominoes yeah. on it and have a <laughs> few shots of rum. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I hear you. We create our own fucking table. Um, but I would like to give a shout out to a book yes, um, here. It is um, uh, Afro-Latin America uh, from 1800 to 2000. And it's a book that I, um, when I was doing my master's and stuff, I, I used this book to just talk about the black experience in Latin America. But also um, the book talks about 
how race plays a role in Latin American society, how mm-hmm. people were ra- erased, how black how black people were erased from Latin American society, how prevalent Afro Latin history is and culture is to Latin American culture, but how our identity on what race is in Latin America differs from the U.S. because it is a different situation because colonialism was different in Latin America. So I would re- suggest like. You know, when people are cr- critiquing the lack of Afro Latin American representation, it's not to be just bitch. It's because historically they have been neglected and have been Excluded. erased from history, and they are a pivotal part of Latin American history. They're a big part of the Americas history, all the way from Canada, all the way to Argentina. This part of the world doesn't exist without Black history at all. Um, so I think it's a really good book if you want to learn more about like just the afro latin american experience uh from 1800 to 2000 i would recommend it but thank you guys for yeah, joining folks. us check it out and check it out and thank you guys for joining us for another episode of delivery woke thanks